Hi, thank you for joining me, Jeannie, here for the ACC Gentle Yoga at 1 p.m. Uh, we're in the community room, and um, as usual, we'll start off with a little bit of warm-up, a modified sun salutation, kind of get the heart uh, and body running, up and running, and then we'll start to um, go back to a little bit of, uh, you know, this in-between poses of hip openers and standing poses. So today, instead of just going directly down to the mat, I know we've been doing that a lot lately, we'll, we'll have a, a couple rounds of warrior two, really just getting into it and learning, you know, to kind of use that um, upright standing position with a, a deep lunge. And so we're gonna use the chair uh, without any arms is the easiest, but I think you could still use one with chairs. Um, with the arms on there too, but uh, you might have to be at a little bit of an angle. But if you have a chair uh, somewhere in the background, that'll help us because like in our low lunge, uh, when we're just stretching out the hips with a warrior two, we'll want our hips supported as we start to uh, improve that strength. So anyhow, so starting at the back of the mat, um, let's go ahead and begin just to arrive. And as you're Taking a moment to just notice the breath. Notice how the mat feels under the feet. You're just allowing yourself to sort of catch up to the physical presence. So as we begin to slow down our awareness, we can begin that deeper cultivation of the breath. Start to think of an inhale and an exhale, separated by a pause. And as your breath cycle continues, you can begin a longer breath cycle, somewhere three to four seconds long now. Let's go ahead and bring our left palm to rest on our chest, right palm underneath the belly button. And as the next few breaths move in and out of the body, I invite you to bring some space to the back of the throat and fully develop that ujjayi breath. As you begin the inhale, feeling the chest lift, maybe the hand on the chest as well, lifting. And then as you exhale, gently gathering the belly button in towards the spine at the bottom of the exhale. And of course the sound of the ocean or deep sigh to finish the cultivation of our ujjayi breath. And of course, we can remain connected at all times, just bringing our awareness if we forget. We'll go ahead and bring our hands to the side and start to bring breath and movement together. Let's go ahead and inhale, start to feel a little taller in our mountain, drawing the energy up through the legs, through the spine, up through the crown of the head. And on the exhale, feeling the energy returning in reverse direction back towards the earth, through the mat, through the body. With the next inhale, we'll start to bring the center of, of support of gravity towards the toes. And as soon as we identify that edge, we start to use the next breath to slowly move back towards the heels. And as we move with each breath forward and back, we'll get a better sense of that muscle uh, memory for the foundation at our feet. We'll go ahead and meet somewhere at the top of the ankles, dropping into the mountain, inhaling, feeling energized upwards. Let's go ahead and roll the weight towards the outer right edge. Fully exhaled at the edge here. Let's go ahead and inhale all the way up to center. Exhale over or just use a two-part breath to inhale from one side, exhale to the other, just your preference. But once you get that idea of left to right, then we'll meet back at center. 
dropping back in. Let's go ahead and inhale nice and tall. Small circles in one direction, getting that identity, uh, identified edge at about the ankles. And then we'll go ahead and tighten in those circles once you find that edge. And drop back into our mountain. Inhaling nice and tall. We'll circle in the opposite direction until we find that edge. Noticing any differences along the way. Coming back to center, we'll drop back in. Go ahead and lift the toes, lift the heels, make any movement. And we'll move on to the balance and the hip lubrication warm up. So standing nice and tall in our mountain, standing weight to the left leg. Let's go ahead. Step the sole of the right foot just slightly above, hovering it above the mat, finding that balance. And if that's available, then we can move forward and back. Just oil up the right hip if it feels a little creaky, a little dry. We'll go ahead and let the right foot land. Inhaling once more, let's go ahead and internally rotate the right hip to an outer rotation of the right hip. We'll do a total of four of those to get that idea of how wide we can sort of rotate the right hip outward. Returning back to mountain, resetting, standing weight on the left side, and once more, this time from outer to inner rotation of the right hip. This is our last warm up for this right side hip. And then we can return to mountain. Go ahead and shake out any activated muscles that forgot to turn off on the left standing leg, side of the body. Sometimes, I just can't stress enough, it's sometimes about turning off those muscles after using them. That might lead to just extra cramping just learning to let go. All righty, we go to the other side and standing weight to the right leg, right side of the body, lifting the sole of the left foot. If we have that balance, we can go ahead and move the left hip at that point by just simply bringing momentum to the weight of the left leg. And we can let that left foot land gently. And of course, you're always welcome to just maintain, cultivate the balance if that's where you are in your practice. When we come back to standing, we're going to inhale, weight to the right side, internal to an external rotation. Our four sets of the, uh, four of these rotations outward. And then we can reset the mountain once more, standing weight again. Return an outer to inner rotation this time, set of four for our second round. Just rotating to sort of bring a little looseness and flexibility to that left hip. All righty, we'll go ahead, moving on up the body. So as we get up to the shoulders, we're, we're hopefully getting a little longer, a little taller in our mountain. You can even gently just engage the glutes, slightly pressing forward to kind of tuck under the tailbone. Palms facing forward. Sometimes I forget, if you just find yourself with your hands inward, just turning them outward, you'll find a little more space in the shoulders. So moving on up with the next inhale, shoulders are lifting, and it's primarily in the shoulders we're making the movement. And then exhale, roll them back and all the way down. Imagine tucking wing tips into the mid back. We're doing a total of four as usual and really cultivating that uh, coordination between the breaths and the movement. That'll help signal to the body all sorts of functions in the nervous system and the endocrine immuno systems, all these body physiological functions enhanced by simple breath and movement. Alrighty, let's go ahead and move upwards once more. Second round, but this time exhaling forward on the deep exhales, making sure the belly button is drawn towards the spine at the bottom of the exhale. And 
And then we can go ahead and shake out any residual tension. Oh, and I forgot to unlock anything in the right leg after that last session too. So go ahead and kick out if you need to. And always remember before you cross that midline, getting those areas on the right side that you're on before you cross to the opposite side. Okay, so moving on up. Now we're moving towards a taller mountain, feeling that energy at the crown of the head like a string pulling you upwards, gentle tuck of the chin. Let's go ahead and exhale, allow the right ear to just dip towards the right side. Inhaling the chest may even lift. Exhale, turn the gaze. Give yourself four good deep breath cycles here to find release on the left side of the neck. Each breath facilitated by the warm-up exercise we had before. Imagining the slow rolling, relaxing of the shoulders on the exhales. And now, after your very last exhale, we'll go ahead and bring the eyes, the gaze, the head completely back up. Then exhale over to the other side. Inhale, up goes the chest. Exhale, turn the gaze. Four more breaths, the breath cycles, and maybe even the eyes, just resting, soft gaze, leftmost side of the vision, all these subtle movements, nuanced movements, adjustments. And after the very last breath cycle, we'll bring the eyes, the gaze, the head completely up, and then let the exhale relax the gaze downward, resting at the top of the mat. Nice long back of the neck. Inhale, find that gentle diagonal lift at the top of the inhale. Exhale, still upright body for the most part, a gentle tilt at the crown of the head. Palms facing forward if you can. And after your very last breath cycle, Go ahead and bring the gaze back up with the inhale. Pass the midline. When you can look above you, go ahead and stop. Use the next few breaths, four breaths, to open up the front of the throat. Maybe a gentle jaw opening from left to right, keeping the shoulders nice and open away from the ears. And then we'll go ahead and exhale, bring the gaze back to center. Give yourself any last minute residual unclenching, unactivating, deactivating. And we'll begin our modified sun salutations with our first fold. So our first one will be kind of long. We'll go ahead and energize the arms downward, reaching downward. As we inhale, arms go up. Exhale, let's go ahead, hinge at the hips and fold. Float or walk the hands down. Give yourself five good deep breath cycles here. Lift the toes, lift the heels alternately. Bend one knee and then the other. Sway the hips if you need. But if you feel extra stiff, this is a good time to sort of try to relax. Keep everything nice and rooted from the hips down to the heels. Keep the tailbone down the spine, down the neck, down the crown of the head nice and loose. See if gra gravity can help you loosen and relax. And if you need to, you can just gently nod the head no, yes. Just let it maybe dangle there like a plum weight. Breathing deeply, feeling hopefully supported more in the heels, somewhere at the tops of the feet. And after your very last breath cycle here, we're gonna do a slow roll up. Start to engage the core by pressing into the feet, engaging the legs, and as you slowly unfurl the spine, one vertebra at a time. Last thing to stack is the head on the neck, palms facing forward. Melt the shoulder blades down the back. Give yourself a breath or two to let the blood rush back to the head. And we're going to fold one more time, reaching downward. Let's inhale, elevate the arms, actively reaching upward. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Fully exhaled here at the fold. We'll take three full breath cycles. Just a little less time here. Sway the hips. 
gently shake the head again. Just let go of the head. Breathing in deeply. Exhaling deeply, draw the belly button towards the spine. Engage the core. We're going to inhale for a half lift. Get long from the tailbone to the crown of the head. See if you can lengthen through the back, through the legs if it's possible. Have something like a 45 degree angle to a 90 degree angle at the hips here. And then let's exhale. Relax back into the fold. And then inhale, press into the core, into the feet. Curl up slowly or come up with a strong inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands down, heart center. Relax to elbows at the side. Press into the palms. Let's inhale for walking meditation. Stepping the right foot forward. Exhaling the heel, ball of foot and toes down. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, left foot down. One full breath cycle per step. And we'll meet at the top of the mat. Standing in our mountain, looking down at the fingertips. Press in with the inhale. Watch the fingertips rise. Separate at the top. Let's exhale to fold. Fully exhaled here. Let's inhale, half lift. Really spin those sits bones back. Feel long from the tailbone down to the heels, as well as the tailbone down to the crown of the head. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands. Step a right foot back. Step a left foot back. And then bring those shoulders with an inhale over your wrists. Bring the knees down. Bring the tops of the feet to rest. Figure out this modified high plank. We're just going to feel strong in the arms, pressing, extending through the arms to get that protracted feeling of the shoulder blades moving away from the spine. See where your shoulders are. If you feel you're a little past your wrists, just inch back down. And then inhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips, and press back with the exhale to our first down dog. Notice where your heels are. And then just give yourself five good deep breath cycles. Really stretching up to the toes on an inhale, carving out the apex of your upside down V. And then exhaling, slowly lowering the heels, giving yourself that movement to help stretch out your dog here. You can alternately walk one knee and then the other. You can do a three-legged dog. Inhaling, extending through the right heel. Exhaling, bring that foot down. If you do one leg, you want to make sure you do the other. And then exhaling that foot down. So there are a number of things you can do with your first dog. You don't have to get too tricky. But just try to get a nice feel, a nice stretch. And then with the last breath cycle, we'll move out with an inhale, looking to the hands with the eyes, walking the hands to the back of the mat, stepping back all the way if you need. Fully exhaled into our fold. Let's inhale, half lift, looking down at the mat. Exhale, fold once more. Inhale, engage the core, come on up. Exhaling hands, down heart center, our second walking meditation. Inhale, right foot up. Exhale, right foot down. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, left foot down. We'll meet at the top of the mat. One breath cycle. One step. And at the top of the mat, inhale, watch the fingertips rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Step a right leg back, step a left leg back. Inhale, long plank. Feel nice and strong here. Give yourself three good deep breaths. Pressing into the palms, fingers splayed. Feeling nice and strong. From the heels, energy shooting all the way up towards the crown of the head. And the belly button just firmly sticking to the belly, to the core. Let's inhale, lift the hips. Exhale. Press the hips back into your second dog of the practice today. And see if those heels lower just a little more. Keep the core engaged. Notice if any adjustments may help between the feet and the hands, or between the hands themselves, the feet themselves. You want to keep the energy lines moving upwards at the hips and downward at the feet and the hands. All right, let's look at the hands with the next inhale. Exhale, walk the hands to the back of the mat, to the fold. 
fully exhaled, inhale, half lift, exhale, fold, inhale, extend the arms, come on up, exhaling hands down heart center, and finally relaxing the arms down to the side. All right, we'll go ahead and move on into our um, more focused uh, warrior two as our sort of return to the standing poses and um, at the same time get our hip opener in. Now I'm going to have a drink of water. It's a great time for just a little bit. As we move into this part of class, we're focused on standing because when you're standing it actually um, helps with bone density, cultivating uh, focus and balance. So it's a great way to just keep your, your focus, your balance uh, cultivated throughout. So generally when we're with a low lunge, and we'll go ahead and start with the right foot bending, the right knee bending, the right foot forward. When we're starting here, we're just concentrating, focusing on this left hip opening. It's the same sort of situation with our Warrior Two, but with the Warrior Two, we're also focused sort of on opening up this back hip so that our hips are not facing forward, but they're kind of facing more towards the side. So as we're moving into our first Warrior Two, we might have something that's gonna start off a little bit closed off, and that's okay. We're working towards eventually getting longer in this back leg and bringing this front knee to sort of be supported in that 90 degree angle with our low lunge that you're familiar with. So we'll kind of work on that. If you're good with low lunge and you want to go straight into the warrior two, go ahead and have your front foot forward. The left foot is going to be at about a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle, but whatever's comfortable for you. Keep the chair nearby for balance. And this back heel of the left foot should be somewhere oh, within an inch or right up against this line of the inner arch of the right foot. So that when you sit down, if you're using the chair, you might start this way, just kind of at an angle with the hips and just opening up this left hip. And as you get a little stronger, you might sit up, use the chair, and start to lengthen out that back leg. So if you just like the low lunge, you can start from there too. So depending on where you are in your practice, go ahead and find your sweet spot once you're comfortable there, and then breathe three breath cycles. Whether you're on the chair, in your rudimentary low lunge, or if you're starting your warrior two. After you find your sweet spot, go ahead and bring your arms up in warrior two. We're sitting on the chair. And for the last breath cycle, breathe. Reaching those arms outward. And when you're done, bring the arms down. We'll go ahead and pivot this left heel and walk it forward. And if you're on the chair, you're just bringing the left foot forward. And we'll move to the other side as we usually do with our hip openers. Again, if you like the hip opener and you want to stay here, go ahead and start by just opening up the hip. Don't worry about extending this left leg or turning the hips off to the side yet. If you're moving into your warrior two, you might have a situation where you feel comfortable supporting the weight standing up above this chair. And then you can slowly start to pivot that heel and see about opening up the hips to the side and eventually you'll get to a point where you can feel openness with the heel and with using the prop of the chair. If you're just using your first beginning stance of warrior two, you can step the right foot back, start to open up the heel, pivoting it outwards, opening up the hips towards the side. And once that feels good to you, making sure you then bend the front left knee, lifting up those arms once you find your sweet spot. And eventually we're lowering down from the center of gravity here, just as we bend forward, straightening out the left, excuse me, the right leg as we're able to. And you can always turn the gaze as well over the left arm. 
and breathing your last few breaths. I know we've all been here at least three to five breaths. You can go ahead and bring the arms down, pivot on the right heel if you're standing, and walk this foot up. And if you're on the chair in any way, just a reminder, lift up, pivot that heel, walk it up from here, or just lift up if you're on the low lunge as we usually are and get off the chair. Okay, we'll move the chair on over and make our way down to the mat. Now we're gonna meet in a wide-legged stance from a side position. So if you like your hips elevated in any way, it's a good time to have a blanket. If you really need it up high, you might need the assistance of blocks. Maybe you're sitting on a high block. Maybe you're sitting on a bolster. Your sits bones at the edge. Maybe the blocks are being used to help support the knees at some point, but keep them handy because as we meet in our wide-legged stance, and it's about a two-tile wide-legged stance for me, so depending on your opening between your hips, it can be anywhere between two and four feet. Just depends on how wide you are, how long your legs are. So just see how comfortable it is. You're starting at the midline, going about a foot, maybe half a foot even if it feels better. And then as you widen, you find how far open your hips are. And just keeping that. If you have to struggle to keep your um, knee and toes in the orientation upward, maybe just narrow the distance between the feet a little bit. Once you feel comfortable on the sits bones, you're not leaning from one side to the other, forward or back, but you're sitting up nice and tall, as if you have a little tail in the back, and it's sticking outward. You'll have the top of your hips pivoted forward just slightly. And then from here, we're just going to take a nice deep breath. Feel that length from the root, the tailbone, all the way up through the spine, through the crown of the head. And then we hinge at the hips, not at the shoulders, not at the neck. We just hinge at the hips until we stop. Once that happens, and I don't know about you, but I am super tight in the hips, so I am not leaning forward very much. So that just is where my practice is. For some of you, you might be able to fully fold all the way down and rest your head on the backs of your hands. Just depends on your practice. So take your time. Usually takes about three to five breaths to find your edge. And then from there, you can relax. Now you can relax the upper shoulders. If you want some support for the forehead, you can use arms, you can use hands, you can use blocks, whatever works for you. But we do, at this point where you identify that nice fold in the hips, then you can relax the rest of the body. And hopefully just by breathing in and out, give yourself five good, deep, slow breath cycles here. See if you can release through the backs of the legs. You can wiggle your toes if you'd like, if you find any tension in there that can benefit from a wiggling. And then you're just breathing. Connect to the ujjayi breath. See if you can find the space at the back of the throat, even in this compressed position, especially if you're folded deeply. Now, after your very last breath cycle here, if your head is supported, bring the hands, palms down to the floor. Gently press so you can lift the head, remove any of the blocks. We're just going to start to inhale nice and long from the tailbone to the crown of the head, and then walk the hands upwards. And as we're up, sitting upright, feeling that energy upward through the crown of the head, let's go ahead and just turn to the right and we're going to fold over to our right side. And hopefully your left hip is still sticking onto the floor and you're just enjoying this nice stretch all the way from the left buttock sit bone area across the center of the lower back 
up through the left side of your rib cage. And hopefully as you lengthen forward, hinging at the hips, if you extend through the left arm, you get even more of a stretch. The right hand, kind of in a kickstand hand with a gently bent elbow, can help to control the amount of weight. But see if you can just fold into a relaxed position, and then that's your spot. And again, here on this side, you might need to support the forehead in some form once you find that sweet spot. And from there, you can breathe five deep breath cycles. If you notice that you started to lift up with the left heel, see if you can come back up and go back in with a little less intensity. Try to maintain that contact of the sits bones. And after your very last breath cycle, pressing into the hands to lift the head, removing any props, keeping them nearby as we go to the other side, inhaling nice and tall your torso, coming back up, walking the torso back up. And as we're exhaled here, let's inhale nice and tall, and then just turn on the exhale to the other side until we stop. Go ahead and fold until your hips stop hinging naturally. And we'll repeat that relaxing point. Give yourself a few breaths to get here. And once you feel you're at that sweet spot, relax the upper body, relax the neck. See if extending the right arm helps. Bring more release to the right side of the body just relax after that. And after your breath cycles are done, go ahead and press into the hands so you can lift your head, remove your props, lengthen through the spine, and walk the torso back upright, coming back to center with that feeling of energy lifting so you can twist back safely. Now the next thing we'll do is come in to a half uh, butterfly half wide-legged stance. What we're doing is getting that nice deep opening in the hips as we're still elongating through that one leg. So we're getting a nice opening now on this left hip with the right leg still extended. Inhaling nice and tall. Exhale, just turn the torso towards this bent left leg. And the center of the chest is moving towards the center of this thigh, but it doesn't have to be there. It might still just be moving a little bit towards this left side. But do your best and try to relax and stay relaxed in the right side of the leg. Keeping the sits bones both connected with even distribution of weight on both. If you find yourself lifting up, See if you can exhale to bring a balance in. If that doesn't help, you may need to back out and go with a little less intensity. If you do that and you find you're still lifted in the left knee, it could just be where you are. Maybe a block under the knee might help. And when you're done with the breath, we're going to go ahead and help this left knee upward, especially with the deeper hip openers. Sometimes we're a little fragile, so help your knee back up. We start to extend once the knee is relatively upright. And then you can start to bring that back, that left leg back into the left wide-legged stance, adjust in the sits bones, and go ahead, move to the other side. Tuck in the right knee, place the sole of the right, f the right foot, <laughs> the sole of the foot on the inner left leg, and then give yourself some time to unfold into this side. 
Notice how tight you are here, or maybe less tight. This gives you an idea. And as you're moving towards finding that sweet spot, making the adjustments needed, you can find that spot where we can inhale nice and tall and turn into our twist with the exhale. And then exhale here, folding. And bringing any type of movement in the upper body. Just having this left forearm on the back of the right uh, knee, thigh area, you can get a nice stretch to the top shoulder on the left side. Placing a swiv swiveling movement to the right elbow. You get a little bit of stretch to the bicep, to the delts any tightness in the right upper shoulder. And then let's go ahead and unwind from here. We'll go ahead and lift up. And with that exhale, come back to center. Remove the block. Help your right knee up and extend once more, shaking out tapping out the right knee and coming back into the wide stance. We're now going to bend both knees and come into our butterfly. I'm going to move to the side so you get a chance to see what this might look like from the side. From the front, it may look like we're deeply bent in our knees, but you know, for some of us it might be better, easier for us to have more of a diamond shape than a butterfly shape of the uh, knees here. So you can bring the heels away from the groin if you find that tightness in the knees and the hips are causing a, a curving of the back. We really want to bring the tops of the hips to be upright so that the spine is just sitting nice and synced in at a 90 degree angle, maybe a 45 degree angle if you need. But we can adjust all of that as we're bringing ourselves into our version of butterfly in a seated position. And again, if you have tight hips, more than likely that's translating into lifted knees, maybe the positioning of your back, your pelvic bowl. So make minor adjustments, nuances. If you find yourself needing to be more upright, that's okay. You can always come out if you've gone a little too deeply. Now as we're finding the opening in the inner thigh muscle areas, and again, the heel proximity to the groin is going to help us get that stretch in the hips more, as opposed to a diamond shape where it's going to be less intense in the hips, but we might get more of a stretch along the IT band, along the um, shin muscle, along the hamstrings. So next thing we can do once we've been here for a while is we can just take a hold of the shins, the ankles, if you've got the strap near you and you can reach it, you might hook those straps up closer to you. So however you find yourself holding on to this general area, you're hopefully going to just keep enough pressure activation in the hands or the fingers if it's hooked onto the ankles, the shins, to hold. Whereas the rest of the arm just relaxes and you'll get this great benefit of an opening in the upper shoulders, maybe even in the neck, just slightly if you kind of pull back and just relax. You'll notice the knees start to uh, drop a little further down towards the mat with each inhale and exhale. And we are in this but seated butterfly for a lot longer than we normally are to give ourselves that more deep yin-like release in the joints. We're taking a good five to ten deep breath cycles from that point where we were holding on to our ankles or our feet. Really see if you can use the ujjayi breath. Inhales are great for imagining energy reaching all points of the body. 
And with the exhales, any achiness, any toxicity, anything, debris that needs to be taken out, gets flushed out, carried out with the fluids as you move them. in these really contracted, more compressed positions. Okay, we've been there for a while. Let's go ahead and release through the hands, release our feet, straps, what have you. And we're just going to once more lean back a little bit on the sits bones and gently help the knees back to center. We're going to find our soles of the feet flatten out. And then let's make sure our time is good. I am backwards. We're moving into a base bridge position. So I'm turning around, but hopefully you've got the feet there, the knees bent, and just walk one hand down and then the other, and just feel hopefully nice and supported on the back. Now as we're here with the knees still bent, and if you have a, a great uh, space but in the lower lumbar area, it might be nice to have you know, that blanket if you were sitting on it, just gently press into the heels so you can lift up the hips slightly as you have a little bit of support in that lower lumbar area. For some, that's just wow. It's a game changer. But if you are okay without, then you're nice and flat. You're going to press gently, rolling on that uh, sacrum, on the uh, flat of your back side there. You kind of feel that rolling action so you can feel as flat of the sacrum onto the mat as possible. Typically, as we were just mentioning, you've got that little lift in the lower lumbar. See if you can flatten it out just a little bit. That's how you are going to support the back as you lift the hips. So with the arms out to a V at either side of the hips, and your heels are not too far from the buttocks, but you feel nice, even distribution of weight on the feet, we'll go ahead and inhale. Start to press into the lower back. Start to peel up as you're pressing into the upper shoulders, the arms, the feet. And you'll just slightly lift up the, heel, uh, the hips. They don't have to be super lifted. You just want to lift them up and feel that support from the heels all the way up to the uh, knees, as well as the shoulders and the arms really pressing as one unit to help support the hips above. Now, once you're ready to come down, we're on the next exhale, we're just going to slowly... From that point where the shoulders, the upper back meets the mat, we're going to roll each vertebra down. One vertebra at a time until the back of the sacrum, and then finally the hips just completely land and are supported. You can relax the, hopefully, um, any activation of muscles and just let your knees drop to one side as you roll to the edge of your feet. And you're going to just let the knees kind of stay either... Uh, hanging in there, in the air, or let them roll all the way to the other side. Maybe your left knee is going to rest on your inner right thigh. Maybe your right knee is going to rest completely on the floor. Maybe they're lifted like mine. Wherever you are, you're just taking this first moment of having a deeply held windshield wipe to the right and taking those deep ocean-like breaths. Take three here. See if you can find release in the upper shoulders. And then if your palms are facing up, let's go ahead and uh, have them face down. Press into the palms, the forearms, the back of the shoulders, and the back and the uh, sacrum, and lift the knees upward with the next inhale. Go ahead and after your back to center here, we're going to exhale over to the other side. Just roll onto the left side to your feet. Let the left uh, side be, uh, let your knees drop to the left side where they, they naturally will be. Don't force it. And then take again that time to find the relaxing point of surrender and breathe three good deep breath cycles here. And after your last breath, we're going to start to inhale, press into the arms, bring the sacrum, the upper back, the arms into play as we bring the knees back up. 
and then make any adjustments. If you started to become misaligned, make sure the spine and the neck are still in alignment, bring them back into alignment. Readjust, make any readjustments once more. And then we're going to bring this left knee completely up, excuse me, left leg completely up, straightening out the left knee. And hopefully you have your strap handy. If you like to use the strap for a spinal twist over to one side with this long leg, you can have the strap at the ball of the foot and kind of just relax your shoulders, let the arms uh, sort of rest here at the back of the um, triceps on the, the mat and just let the hands be resting right above the chest. If you can do your spinal twist another way and you have a preference, that's great. All we're going to do is use our right hand or the straps, use the left hand to uh, anchor yourself, brace yourself on the left side. You can use a number of things to help you, but we're going to exhale this right leg down and then help the left leg over with the next inhale. And then we exhale over. And if you have a block handy, which there, oh, I see, hidden by my blanket. If you have your block handy, you can have that support your fit. Or you can wait for gravity to help you over. And hopefully you're finding your edge for your spinal twist to the right on this side. Once you find that edge, you can make your last minute adjustments with your arms. They can be at a, a T, at a 45 degree angle off to the side. Find if the palm side up or down, how that translates into the shoulder of that arm. The very last movement can be just resting the gaze to the opposite side of your twist. And then breathing here, five deep breath cycles, or ten if you want to make them extra long, extra fast. Give yourself a good long time on this side. So you know you've gone at least five good deep breath cycles. And your ego breath is engaged. And little parts of the body begin to just melt. You might have just suddenly let go of a toe, maybe a glute. Maybe a tiny really face from the top of the mouth. And then as we finish up our breath cycles, we can prepare to come out by bringing the gaze back to center. And then if you have your strap on the foot, you're going to want to get a hold of that once more, bringing that tautness to the ball of the foot. And if you just have a hold of the material, you're going to inhale, use your arms to help you bring the strap or the material of the leg back to center on the mat. And then go ahead and set it up for the other side. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure your spine is aligned. You can start by having that base bridge position, feet near the buttocks, arms a few inches away from the hips. If you're using the strap, go ahead and strap that on. Follow the foot. Give yourself a moment or two. Sometimes we just need a little bit of time to lengthen just this right leg, or the leg that's going to be twisting over. But once we get there, we're going to extend through the left leg, bringing out our anchor arm if we need, inhaling and then guiding the right leg over, both hands or the strap. And then finding, hopefully, another block <laughs> on this side. To land the leg, the foot, and the hip, or just gravity to help. 
Maybe you might have that chair nearby. Maybe you could rest your foot on the chair. Well, it looks like this is about as far as I'm going over on this side today. Once you find that edge, give yourself the five to ten breaths. As you near in the very last breath cycle, to come out of the spinal twist on this side, I'm going to bring the gaze back to center if it was turned. Then use the strap, getting it taut once more on the ball of the foot. And then inhaling, bringing the anchor hand down, pressing back onto center. Alrighty, and then extending the right leg long. Go ahead and give yourself a gentle tap of the knees. You can bend both knees, bringing the soles of the feet up. Give yourself a, a not as long of a windshield wipe. You could just let the knees fall to one side and then the other. Inhaling back up to center, you always want to keep the, the back on the mat. Inhaling to bring the knees back up, exhaling to let them drop over. You'll get a nice little massage on the backside as well, hopefully. And now we're moving into our Shavasana. So just get yourself prepared. Like if you're in an air conditioned room, get a blanket. If you like to have extra cushioning on the back, now's this time to just get comfortable. The knee, uh, excuse me, the neck and the spine are connected in one nice long line. In the toes, the legs can be stretched out wide. Let the feet roll out towards the corners of the mat. And just notice if the palms are up or down. Just having the palms up sometimes and letting the fingers just be naturally relaxed. That hopefully will help keep the shoulders open so that all you have to do for the next five minutes is just let the sound of the breath guide you. And then we'll hear the three bells to awaken.
Bring the mind back to the body. Take note of sounds outside the room, sounds within the room, finally back to the breath. Notice how the air enters the nose, the air a little warmer as it exits the nose. And as you reconnect to the body, I invite you to make movements in the fingers, toes, hugging yourself, rocking, doing whatever it takes to kind of reconnect to the body. And then we'll meet back in an upright seated position and end class with a uh, breath exercise. We'll go ahead and use our um, alternate nostril breathing exercise. So coming back upright, you can have your knees um, in an easy seated position, one chin out in front of the other, or you can have uh, your staff position, whatever is comfortable for you. But we'll go ahead and bring the left hand into our chin mudra, index and thumb, and the right hand goes into our Vishnu mudra. And you can always bring the first two fingers to rest Close with the right uh, nostril, right thumb, left nostril, right ring finger, or knuckle, depending on how your right mudra is. So we'll go ahead and take a nice deep breath. Close the right nostril, exhale through the left. On the bottom of the exhale, draw the belly button in towards the spine. Fully exhaled here, let's inhale deeply. From the root, feel the lengthening of the spine all the way to the crown of the head. Close, exhale to the right. Inhale through the right. Close, exhale to the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Last round. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close. Exhale through the right. Go ahead and remove the right hand. Release the mudras. Let the breath return to its natural state. Oh, I need an extra breath there. Mm. Bring hands to heart center. Thank you so much for joining me, Jeannie, here at the ACC Community Room for Gentle Yoga at 1 p.m. I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste.